Hey, welcome everyone to another consumer tech advice video. This time we're talking about Asus routers getting hacked. Yes, a jolly old good time to be alive. Um, so I do have an Asus router myself, so I'm maybe going to be impacted by this. So uh, if you want to see the written version of this video with the instructions as well, you can find a link to my website in the video description. Now in this video, we're discussing a few things and I'm going to simplify as much as possible, even for those who are not tech savvy on how to check if you were compromised and also how to fix it. That's the most important thing. Okay. So, um, if you want the quick and dirty fix, you don't care about looking at my ugly face and hearing my annoying voice. The quick fix is um, update the firmware of your router to the latest version, factory reset it, and then put in your Wi-Fi password and stuff all that back again. That is a super quick fix to it. Okay, I just saved you a ton of time. Maybe like and subscribe to the channel, but I don't recommend you do that because you won't know if your router was compromised. And by not knowing if your router was compromised, do the bad, bad actors, which in the cybersecurity world, bad actors usually means people with malicious intent, like hackers, do the bad actors then use your hacked router to payload malicious software to your computer that maybe hasn't run an antivirus scan or something in a while, or maybe you have like an old tablet that doesn't receive updates from Samsung or something anymore that your kids use, was that compromised? You won't know if you were hacked. And if you're not tech savvy and want to learn new, some new stuff, especially about your network router that you own, well, you might learn a thing or two here for future use cases. So let's continue on. So we're going to talk about what is the attack itself, uh, how to prepare to fix it. It's super easy. And then how to check if you were hacked and remediate the issue at the same time and how to prevent the attacks from happening again in the future. So basically a botnet attack was discovered by a security firm called Grey Noise using their firm's AI. Don't you love it when AI does good for people instead of like taking over jobs and whatnot? Now, Grey Noise did discover the attack industry back in March. They disclosed it to ASUS and then they made it general public information because now there are some fixes available through um, the support of ASUS themselves. The attack itself was called a shush. Yeah, real original there, right? <laughs> And what a botnet hack effectively means is that they could use it in a number of ways to maybe mass automate a DDoS attack against a target uh, using devices to spread malware like key logging information to steal your username and passwords when you enter through a website or something and maybe crypto mining by hacking your computer and so on and so, so forth. Basically, it's bad. So far, there are 9,000 known ASUS routers confirmed to be hacked. However, that's only the confirmed number. So the number of hacked routers is probably potentially much larger. The bad actors basically inject their own SSH key on port TCP 53282. Uh, long story short, because they exploit a legit feature that by brute forcing the credentials of the router's functionality itself, when they get in, they're using a legit function of the router. So the router doesn't realize that even if you were to upgrade the firmware or reboot the router, it doesn't fix the problem. That's why you have to go through the steps that I'm going to show you and what I mentioned at the beginning of this video. And to remain undetected, what the bad actors seem to be doing is that when they get into an ASUS router, they typically then turn off logs so people can't check to see if they were being uh, hacked or not from specific IP addresses. And they even turn off the built-in function from Trend Micro AI protection. Uh, Trend Micro is best known for their antivirus products, but in this case, they use it for like network traffic on your ASUS router if you have that function on. So far, the bad actors haven't done anything malicious yet, but it's possible they're preparing for a much larger attack, which is typically how bad actors uh, behave. Okay, so how do we prepare to fix this? So some really key, easy things to do. First and foremost, don't try to do this remotely. Make sure you're connected to the same network as your router itself. So for most people that's being at home, make sure you're doing that. You're not like halfway across the world. Now, secondly, try to have a wired connection to your router because you might get disconnected and have to factory reset it. And then doing this wirelessly is just not going to work. The process will require rebooting your router at least once minimum, depending on how bad your situation is, maybe multiple restarts. We'll, we'll see. Um, and that means, of course, the internet will most likely shut down on your network, especially those at home. So if you have kids watching, you know, Netflix or YouTube kids and their stuff stops working, they'll be like, daddy, 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 the internet's not working. They start punching you with your little tiny fists of fury, which typically happens in, in my house all the time. And you don't want to do this when someone is working remotely on meetings and whatnot, because again, the internet will go down. And if you had advanced configuration, be sure to back up your configuration settings. Um, there is a guide on ASUS on how to do this. Just Google search this. Advanced configuration is not going to be applicable to 99% of the people. So you don't have to worry about it. The only thing is that when you have advanced configuration, if during the process you find out you were potentially hacked, 
when you import those configuration settings back in, you'll have to turn those functions back off anyway. So just be mindful of some of that settings. And for about 100% of the people, most likely, everyone's using some sort of wireless technology, make sure if you have to uh, factory reset your router, make sure that you back up the exact name of your router and the password because all your devices will have to reconnect to it. So if, if something's wrong, you retype in the password again incorrectly, or the Wi-Fi name of your 2.4 or 5 gigahertz network is wrong by even one letter, your devices won't connect properly. So just keep that in mind. It's, it could be a big pain in the butt. Okay, so I took me a ton of research to find out how to get this done because I couldn't find an all-in-one website page for this issue from Asus on how to resolve it. Uh, in fact, a lot of tech news websites are like, yeah, just factor reset, you'll be fine. No, this is wrong because people will just reactivate the functions that will cause a problem again, most likely, or they won't factor reset and update the firmware to the latest version. Also, if your router cannot update to the latest version, maybe it's like end of life support, first and foremost, get a new router. That's just bad security in general. You're exposing your whole network and everything connected to it at that point. But there are methods to uh, bypass the issue and how to fix it if you're in that situation. So uh, after all my research, I've compiled all the steps we need to go through together, and that's what we're gonna do right now. First, we need to connect to your router. How do you do that? In my experience using Asus routers for like over a decade, there have been two ways to do it, and it seems to vary depending on um, your router model and the firmware update available at the time. Because at one point, you would have to go to, I'll put these things in the video description so you can copy and paste it easy. You have to go to router.asus.com except it doesn't work anymore. M more recently, you have to go to the IP address of your router. How do you find that out? So in Windows, it's very easy. You hit the start button or the Windows button, whatever you want to call it, and type in CMD. CMD is basically short for command prompt and open it up. In here, you're going to type in IP config, and I'll zoom in so you can get the spelling and hit enter. For those of you that are not tech savvy, all this stuff, most of it is junk to you right now. We don't care about it. All you care about is the default gateway, okay? Uh, so in my situation, it's 192.168.50.1. I'm going to copy that. So control C on my keyboard and just paste it. And this will take me to my login page. Now, if you want to get your IP address on a Mac, um, I have a Mac. I just I don't know where the heck it is. And I'm too lazy to screen record it. So I'll just put steps to that in the video description to a Nord VPN page. It's super easy. Once you get your IP address, you follow the same steps from here on out. Okay, so upon logging in, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff. If you're not used to seeing this, don't get intimidated. This is exactly what we're going to navigate. Super easy. Uh, you'll see your Wi-Fi names, like here I have Susano and Perfect Susano. It's a reference to Uchiha Madara, for those of you that are culturally aware. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is, let's see, has the bad actors been trying to access your router from their specific IP addresses? So to do that, on the far left, you go under Advanced Settings and then System Log. And you want to look for very specific logs that they seem to be using. There's four of them. So to find out, I'll put them in the video description. You can look at it. So here are the four IP addresses you want to look for in the logs. You can pause the video here and just type it out quickly. Um, if that's a pain, you can just go to my website link, as I mentioned, and I'll have the information there. You can copy and paste it easily. So while on your logs page on Windows, you want to hit uh, Control F on most browsers to search within the page. In Macs, I believe it's Command F. And they're just going to paste in those IP addresses and see if anything comes up. So I got nothing for the first result. And just kind of cycle through the four IP addresses to see if anything's there. Okay, so I got no results. What happens if you did find a result somewhere in the logs that come up? Bad news, most likely you were hacked. Then at that point, you just have to update to the latest firmware first and then factory reset second. The reason you don't want to factory reset and then update the firmware later is because we don't know if during this botnet attack, they're constantly hammering your router and they might just access it all over again. So update to the firmware first and then factory reset second. So here's one caveat with a lot of these tech news websites saying, hey, check these four IP addresses and block them. This is not a surefire thing because the bad actors, there's two things. They're smart enough to make this attack happen. So that means we don't know if they have other IP addresses we're not aware of that they're attacking from. So these four IP addresses might be the whole scope of everything. Keep in mind that they've hacked over 9,000 routers worldwide. So we don't know if they're going to use those to piggyback off of and payload the attack from those botnets and then target your machine from there. So checking these four IP addresses is good. Those are the primary attacking addresses, but they might not be the only ones. But there are other steps we're gonna go through to help validate if you're hacked or not. So let's continue on. The next thing you wanna see is where they actually using the SSH attack vector to get into your system. So on the left side, we're gonna to go to under advanced settings again and then hit administration. Then at the top, we're gonna to go to system. And then here you wanna to go to service and under there you wanna see enable SSH. By default, it should be set to no. 
that means you're good, there's nothing to worry about. If you have LAN only, most likely you're safe because it's going to be accessed from your internal network, so you're okay. If you have LAN and WAN, you might be in trouble here, especially considering that, you know, if there's any connection being made over TCP, TCP port uh, 53282, and there's like this long-winded um, SSH public key, which I'll copy and paste into the video description you can check for, that's only be applicable to more advanced users. Non-advanced users are just going to have enable SSH set to no, and you're good to proceed to the next step. So according to Gray Noise, that's how you check if the hacker impacted your router or not. The additional steps you're going to go to are the recommended steps from ASUS. The only reason I was able to find this, and not on the ASUS website anywhere, is because this is what they're passing on to tech news websites. Like, hey, pass on this information. It's kind of weird. They, they didn't post it themselves. I couldn't find it. So let's continue on based on what ASUS recommends you do as well. Now we're going to go to WAN on the left and look for a function called DDNS on the top. And is DDNS set to no? If it's set to no, you're good. Nothing to be concerned about. Um, so we can continue on. Now we want to block those four offending IP addresses. I mentioned earlier that the bad actors can hop between their botnets and they might have new IP addresses, but because we know these four IP addresses are malicious in intent and they might use it for future attacks of some kind, this is good practice to just block them in general. So that's what we're going to do next. So to do that, we're going to go over to firewall on the near the bottom left, on the, and then we're going to go to network services filter. Now keep in mind, this is not a must do, but this is what ASUS recommends you do. And I kind of agree with them. So looking at their documentation, we're just going to kind of follow along with their steps. So you want to enable a uh, network services filter to yes. And we're going to do a deny list and we're going to keep this to user defined. We're not going to touch this. And according to ASUS documentation, the easiest thing to do is just kind of leave all the rest as is. Then what we're going to do is those four IP addresses, we're going to put them in the source IP. Why the source IP? Because what's happening here, the way the ASUS routers are configured is that source IP is the source of the, in the incoming connection. So the bad actors are trying to connect to you. So they're the source connecting to you. The reason we're leaving destination IP blank is that is because when your device is trying to connect to something. So for example, let's say google.com IP address for them. I think, I believe it's 8.8.8.8. Uh, um, Google's never trying to connect to you almost never. It's usually you trying to go to their services and use it. So you would, if you want to block Google in your house, you would block 8.8.8 because .8 .8 .8 .8 that's the destination. Okay. You're trying to reach the destination. In this case, they're trying to reach us and they're the source of the data. So we're just going to hit the plus icon here and just copy and paste this with all the four IP addresses I mentioned, and we will continue on. I hit apply and you see the settings are now applied. In, in my particular firmware that I'm running right now and my router, I didn't have the router reboot, but I would suggest you don't take that chance if there's something, especially an important meeting happening, someone's working remotely, don't take that chance. Okay, so what we've done at this point is either confirmed you have or have not been hacked, hopefully not. Um, we've now prevented the hacker being able to get into our settings in the future and using this current exploit as of today, but we need to prevent this from happening further again, just a surefire way. And this is the ultimate thing to do is now to update the router itself. So to do that, we're going to go to administration on the left. We're going to see firmware upgrade and then hit check to see if there's an update available for you. You can do it this way, or you can go to the ASUS website and download it manually, put onto a USB stick, slap the USB stick into the back of the router if it has a USB port and do it that way. I like to do the automated method. It's just easier, just less work. This process, after it checks and finds an update, the update itself and rebooting the router could bring the router down for, in my experience, three to five minutes. I know it kind of varies depending on which firmware update I'm going up to. So just keep that in mind that your internet most likely will not be available if, if it's your router is the main connection hub for everything. Um, so you'll have to be patient with that. And when you look at that, the one time I need to update as I'm trying to do a YouTube presentation, it says like, nope, we can't connect to our systems. So you got to do it manually. <laughs> so you're going to have to do the USB method. So I'll do that later when I'm done recording this video. Um, but that's pretty much it. So for anyone wondering, can you, if you're a power user and you had SSH when on and you, you go through the steps, you confirm you're not hacked and you update the firmware, can you turn it back on again? Is it safe? I suppose there's very little information from ASUS on what to do afterwards. It's like they're still trying to find out the information themselves. However, the SSH thing through WAN connectivity is just another entry point to your router. So just be careful, right? Just good, strong passwords. Just be cautious. Just know that you're taking that risk currently, at least. 
Um, for everyone else, you're going to be good to go. So I do hope you learned a little bit while trying to fix the issue. Um, that's pretty much a wrap from me. So if you like this video, be sure to check out my social links and website link in the video description. Hit the like button, subscribe. It literally helps my channel grow. And thanks for watching.